Hello and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. So this episode I've got quite a few things that I want to talk about but first of all I'm going to show you what I've been doing in between episodes. So we have a present here from Jassassin and I actually caught him placing down the sign. I came through the portal right as he was placing it down but he's been kind enough to bring us over some carrots and potatoes. And I've also been moving all of my items from uh, the chests that I had under the trees in the ground over there. I've been moving them all over to this area here. And uh, this is just because I've been moving stuff out into the nether for the bulk storage. So we have um, lots of blocks of iron and gold and I think I'm going to get out my fortune pick and turn these into blocks of lapis as well. And I thought I'd just show you everything that we have here at the moment because this is most of my valuable stuff. I've been enchanting some bows. These aren't the best ones. I'll show you those in a bit. I've uh, got more feather falling boots. got some diamond ore. I went strip mining or branch mining. Oh, I can't even remember what one's what now. Uh, but I'd done that last night for about an hour and a half and I got 20 diamond ore, which wasn't very good. I would have liked to have got 30 or maybe a bit more than that. got tons of sand. I've been taking trips to the desert and I put some glass in the holes where the ravine was over there. That was suggested by a user uh, who commented on my video. It was a really good idea. And there, more sand and, and nether brick in there. Uh, then we've got some random items, empty chest, lots of ice, um, running a little low on glowstone, I'd like to get more of that so I can use it in my builds more often. Um, just a few other items in here, these aren't so interesting but I thought I'd just show you what I have. That's my redstone supply, I've <laughs> got a lot of that saved up, I don't know what I'm going to use it on though. Um, yep, and just more items, sorry, more chests with not that interesting items in. And I've also got this other chest over here. I just throw kind of derpy items in so I don't have to always walk around trying to find the right chest for them and then occasionally I just organise that. And it looks like we have two more visitors here. We have that Enderman from earlier as well. And now that I've been storing items over here, um, it's, it's getting a little bit of a annoyance because I'm walking from this place back over to that one over there. So what I was thinking is that maybe if I have another project in the future I could actually change this room and use it for something else. And then we could modify this one over here and maybe make the back of the room a storage area or do something with these walls, put some chests down there or something like that. That would actually be quite nice, I think, to sort of walk down here, have your enchanting table, and then you can just turn around and walk down again and there's more storage. I think that would work quite nicely. Um, so anyway, now that all my items are in these dispensers, they're not all in a chest, it actually makes it a little bit difficult to keep track of them. So what I did is I went through all of them, wrote down a list of what I'd like to enchant. So we need more silk touch, touch shovels. I've only got the one and I'd like one with actually a, a lower efficiency for getting glowstone with but um, I haven't had any luck with that so far. I think in a previous episode I also commented that I didn't know where my looting swords are gone because I put one over there. I actually put one over here as well. So we've got five of these swords. We're doing good on that front. And yeah, we've got a load of sharpness four swords in here, the others I just get rid of. And yeah, no looting swords in there. Some bows, check these bows out, these are really good. Been enchanting these. And what I've now been doing with enchanting, and I foolishly done this with diamonds, which is something you shouldn't do, but with cheaper things like iron swords and uh, the bows, if I get an enchantment I don't like, if I get a couple of them, I just craft them together into a new bow and enchant that. And it just means that if you spend more time, you'll have end. Yeah, you'll eventually end up with a load of good bows like this and then I tried to get some more underwater helmets but I had no luck with that whatsoever and yeah that's, so that's what I've been doing I've been moving my items around and doing a lot of enchanting I've also been brewing potions as well I thought I'd just quickly show you the amount of invisibility ones that I have I've stocked up just in case they ever decide to change the recipe for that in the future because it is really easy to get and if we just go through here there's a couple of things I want to show you in the nether First of all, those... Oh, God, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, and he's not aggro at me either. That really did scare me. I don't know why. <laughs> so uh, my portals over here have gone out of sync as well. Um, need to fix that somehow. It's this one, the branch mine one, that's actually gone out of sync. So now I go through to the other one and there's a little hole in the ground so I can get to my branch mine. And also, I've realised something that means we might have to rebuild the entire storage area. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this off for a while because it's kind of like an OCD thing and I don't really want to give in, but I probably will. Um, someone suggested it and Biff has been doing it, which has reminded me. But underneath half slabs you can place ice and then the floor will have the speed of the ice. So when I sprint like this, I'll go really fast. And that is going to be so useful to have here in the Never. just makes that travelling a little bit quicker. So... 
in order to do that I think we would need to lower this down yeah we definitely do we'd have to lower the whole room down by one block which basically means removing everything I placed moving it down one block with the exception of uh, the, these two chests and the nether brick on either side but everything else above and below it would have to be changed so that is a really big um, job to do and I'm not going to even think about doing that anytime soon but that is probably something I will do lower this all down one block so I can just place ice uh, underneath these half slabs here we are at the spider farm and I thought I'd show this for any of you that missed it in the last episode it was right at the very end that I actually got round to finishing this off so now that I have time to uh, take a break from being here and I've come back I do really like this room especially the piston lighting it'd be nice to have another texture in between that matches it maybe the furnace one but I don't know I think I'll leave it like this for now it doesn't really need changing at all but um, the reason I'm here is just to talk to you about a couple of things first of all a Hermitcraft now has its own subreddit and there's a link to that in the description box where the members list used to be so you can go there if you want to participate in the reddit people post um, videos and you can chat there with us and stuff you know how it goes if you've been to reddit before it's a pretty simple website to understand and as well as that I also want to talk about the previous episodes we've been doing a lot of talking and I'm talking a lot at the moment as well I will get around to doing the usual uh, usual business but I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much for all your support it was really great to read and it's made me feel a lot more confident about uh, doing these episodes and recording um, but there's one thing which is that I am very self-critical and I think that's a good thing because it means I put in a lot more effort into my videos than I think most people do so I've noticed a few of you have been saying that that you think I'm too self-critical but I think it's a good thing and uh, I'm just going to take it easy from now on I feel like I've got the right balance for recording Hermitcraft and I might even do more episodes more frequently now, do midweek ones because recording is getting a lot easier and in general I've just been finding uh, the game a lot more fun and that could be down to the snapshots actually because there's been a few extra features that I've wanted to explore and I don't know, I'm just enjoying playing on here a lot at the moment so yeah, thank you very much for your support and also uh, the episode before last, the way I started it, a lot of people got the wrong impression that I was saying that I was not in the mood for playing and recording. That's rarely true. I just wasn't in the mood for recording in the typical style where I do my little takes and stuff. So that's when I started to think, you know, I should try something different. And you know what? I think it's been going very well and it's going to be successful. But anyway, so there are just two more things that I wanted to talk about quickly. I was just standing here and I was looking around at the wall and I remembered that this was supposed to be colour coded so we had purple for potions and then the rest of it doesn't really make any sense so I was thinking about what else we could use and I thought perhaps we could do diamond blocks, iron blocks, gold and emeralds so I'm not 100% sure on that idea but let me know what you guys think maybe we'll do that and the other thing that I wanted to tell you was so annoying I came over here to breed the pigs which you now need carrots to um, breed them with and there was one left and I couldn't believe it. The trap doors were open. Um, yeah, they'd all just fallen down there. All their drops must have despawned because it probably happened quite a while ago. So I had one pig left and yes, all of the rest of them were dead. So I came down here to investigate what had happened and the switch didn't work. So I broke these blocks and went behind. And some things were missing here. That um, redstone dust there, the redstone torch, that repeater and then that repeater there. Those were the only things that were missing and everything else was here and that is just bizarre. I don't know what has caused that. Is it a snapshot problem? I haven't been near this for ages. I don't think an enderman could have done that. So yeah, very strange. Uh, it took me a moment to fix it and then I had to go on an annoying journey uh, which I went all the way over there with wheat because I was still used to using that for luring pigs and I found some and of course they didn't follow me so I had to make uh, the journey all the way back and get some carrots. Well, I've been unsure about what I want to do at the moment, so I went hunting for some glowstone. You can see I've got quite a few stacks in here, and a couple here as well, because my ender chest is full. And on the way I got killed a couple of times, I got killed by some of those wither skeletons. I just uh, wasn't looking, I turned around there were two of them. And they are really strong, I tell you that. And the other time was a typical incident of shooting ghasts that have been harassing me, and a pigman walked in my way. Uh, but nonetheless, I think I lost a couple of items when I went back to pick them up. And I also took an ender chest with me. Now, this is good if you've got a silk touch on you. I talked about that before. But if you don't, it's kind of easy when blaze rods are now a little bit easier to get because they're more common. 
but when you've got tons of ender pearls as well, all you have to do is break it and then you get eight obsidian, so it's no loss at all, which I thought was cool. Um, but anyway, I think what I should do now is just continue working on this. There's not too much to talk about at the moment. I might make a trip back to the base and get loads of glass. I've been getting loads of sand ready for that, and I might glass up the sides of these and put down some grass in the middle. But uh, at the moment, I think what I'll do first is just start um, some work on this corner section where it turns around and goes this way. I wanted to record a bit of a status update at the moment haven't done too much, you can see it now, this is where it turns the corner, but I've been taking tons of trips back and forth, uh, mainly because I couldn't remember how this section goes where we go in a straight line, but I've got it all down now, and I think I've made a big mistake with this part of the bridge. Now if we just look back here, you can see these bits of three blocks like that. Now on this side they're two, and then when you have this bit that comes out at this level, it doesn't go any lower than this, there's an extra one going across those three blocks and that's how I built it before and then when I built this one I've built it going the whole way across with the extra block like that. Now what I might do is just leave it there because uh, it's going to be an absolute pain to get rid of. At the same time I'm battling the old OCD trying to uh, tell myself that I should do it otherwise it will annoy me but I think due to the amount of work that it is and the fact that probably no one will notice it I won't do it but who knows I might uh, go and fix that at some point. Anyway, I'm just doing a supply run. I've just smelted a load of glass and stone, and I forgot to bring some grass with me as well, but I'll probably have to take another trip for that. And that's, as I said, something I've been doing. It um, doesn't look like I've done much, but I've just had to make so many trips back and forth. It's been quite annoying. Okay, I'm standing on the top of the tunnel. You can see that I've put in three of these lava drop bits, or six, one on either side. Uh, we should pop down and have a look. Let's try and drop in. Ah, oh, I dropped right next to that bit, so I couldn't get in. Um, oh, here we go again. How many of these have I killed today? I'd say at least 15, at least. Let's go see if there's a ghast here. No, no there's gunpowder, but no ghast here. Anyway. <sighs> Well, normally I'd stop recording, but as I've said before, I'm trying out new ways of doing this, so I'm just going to try and kill this guy. And then I'll show you what I've done. One thing I've noticed is they love to change direction when you choose to shoot. That happens so often. They're drifting one way, you aim slightly in front of them, no ghast here again, and then they start going the other way. Yeah, that looks really good, doesn't it? So yes, yeah, so I've built three of the little things on the side. Um, I thought it'd be nice to come out an angle like this and see how they look next to each other. And do you know what? That looks really good. I think I've done a good job with the diagonal one. Um, so what's next to do is to put in the glass and the grass. And I think I'm going to do that all the way up to somewhere around here. But obviously how many resources I have would be a limitation. And uh, that's actually why I had to stop doing this because I brought up a ton of stone. I could go and get more but um, it gets kind of boring building the same thing over and over again. So it's nice to do it in little chunks like this. And uh, yeah, the plan was though to do it all the way up to the end there, that's as far as I went, but I only had enough to do this bit. I've just got done doing the first section of this tunnel, I've got to make a run to get more glass now. And there's a ghast outside here, which is one of the reasons I'm staying put at the moment, just waiting till that one goes away. And I was thinking about the glass, I wasn't too sure how to do this, because I could keep it on the outside like I've done before. I was thinking it might be easier to build it if we put it on the inside. So when I came over here, I quickly realised that there's not much difference on putting it on the inside or outside. And it wasn't too difficult just to place a block underneath, put the glass on top of it, and then look at it from a different angle. You can break the one below it. So I'll put it on the outside and I'm happy with that. It looks good. And also the glass kind of gets stacked up a bit, all of the textures, because you're looking at it from the diagonal angle. You can see that. It doesn't look so good. And it's not as bad when you're centered. So when you're coming through here, I think when you're looking side on like that, it's fine. But when you're looking forward, it does get a bit stacked up the edge of the textures. And that doesn't happen in the other tunnel because it's all um, in a straight line. So it doesn't have that kind of effect. Or at least it probably does a little bit when you're approaching at this angle. Uh, but anyway, I will go get some more glass and continue doing this. Well, there we go. I think I've done another two or three sections of this and I had a gas shooting at me whilst doing one of them. And it didn't cause too much damage but I was quite lucky for the rest of it I didn't have any shooting at me at all which is good. And I've realised as well um, that we need to put some torches down on this dirt because the light level is so low in the nether that 
um, yeah, that the grass is not growing. And that's something I never really notice when I'm in the nether. It always just seems like fine to go around. Like the visibility isn't too bad, I guess. So there's no real need to place down torches. But of course, the light levels themselves are not enough. So I'm going to go. Oh, looks like that one there's grown over. It's probably the light from the lava doing that. And oh, there's a half slab missing there. I'll put a block there to remind me as well. I noticed there was a little bit missing over here as well, so I put a nether rack there. And at the end I've done something clever. I've put over a little shield because whenever I'd walk out of this area there'd always be a ghast just creeping around on the edge and it would shoot back into this area. And luckily that didn't do too much damage. But at the moment I want to take a break from doing this. It's I don't know. Sometimes I'm in the mood for doing the bulk work, this kind of stuff, and sometimes you're not. So I've got a few ideas of what I want to go and do next. I think I'm going to head over to the portal, the sorry, the portal, the hub. Let's just shoot this guy because he's really annoying me. I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm saying. Did two of those just three just bounce off of that guy? It looked like three of those shots just bounced right off of him. And it also sounded like there was another one as well, but I don't know where that guy went. So yeah, anyway, there's something that I want to do at the nether hub. So my plans for the nether hub were to come back here and grab some wool and then what we could do in the nether hub is change some of the walls so they have like a, a wall marking around it maybe on the sides or at the top and bottom so when you're in the hub you can look around and see what side you're looking at. Now Joe Hills commented in a video that the nether hub being symmetrical and all of that is a little disorientating and it always takes you a moment to figure out where your tunnel is so I thought by colour coding some of the walls that would be a good idea. You could walk in there See, there's the green wall, that's my one, and head off in that direction. Uh, the problem with this is, now this is something that you used to be able to do, I'm 100% sure of it. You used to be able to take any coloured wall and dye it, and then you'd change it into red wall. And it seems like you can't do that anymore. And I'm so sure that you could have done that once. But anyway, it means we're limited for uh, options for colour, and also that to get some uh, lots of red wool, I'd have to go over there and dye the sheep and then shear them all, which I'm really not into the mood for because that takes a long time. I've done a lot of that with the map. So I thought that I'd put the idea off for now. Maybe I'll ask Joe if he likes it and we could work on that together sometime. And I thought, what else can we do at the moment? And I quite fancied working on this part of the hub, our Avalon hub, that is. And um, this has actually grown on me. Now that I've left it in here for some time, I quite like it having the little mound and then having our base underneath it, and especially the entrances, they look really cool like that. So what I want to do is just work on this a bit. I want to make it a little more rounder and a little bulkier, especially on this side. That kind of looks weird, that side, with this big flat bit here. And also by doing that we can get rid of some of these dark patches as well. And uh, it's not going to take too much to change this up, you know, it's not going to be a lot. I'm just going to change a few things here and there and then what I wanted to do once I've done that is start work on this pathway here and I think I mentioned it before that one idea was just to make it go out over to the animal breeding pens and that's what I want to do. I want to connect the hill on this side over here up to that bit and then hide this area here so we can build a tunnel going all the way across to the animal breeding area and I think that's going to look really cool on this side as well where the land's just going to open up and a nice pathway is going to come out here onto the sand. Check it out. <laughs> I'm removing the uh, grass from this bit here. There was loads of it on this actually, which is kind of weird. I should have left a gap because I knew about the lighting glitch. And yeah, <laughs> we got a creeper. So there was obviously some dark spots left in here. Let's not let him explode. But how close can we get? Is he going to come out? Come on. Yes, nice shot. So I've fixed all of the lighting problems in here. We don't have the ones up there and we have none of them anymore in this room. There was actually quite a few of them. There were some over the back here, there was ones around this bit here and also all of this had the lighting glitch as well. Because um, all of that looked dark before, it almost looked like the same material as this but now that we've fixed that it looks a lot better. So let's go up here and have a look. Nothing doesn't really look too much different, it's just dirt. I still need to fill in some of this. Dirt and grass, that's all it is. Um, the top looks a bit silly over here because I had to move these blocks around so I'm going to make that look a little more natural just slope it off in that direction a little and then what we need to do next is build up quite a lot of this area because I want to build that height over there all the way over here so it covers up on this side here and then that's going to have to come all the way across here and go off back round to there so if you follow the cursor it's probably going to come round like that 
round to here and the reason why we need it all at that height is because that's one block above the roof of our tunnel and uh, once we put all the dirt in here we can have another block below it which will probably be sandstone I think I'll make all of this out of sandstone and have gravel and then we'll need to do some lighting um, we could also take the opportunity to do something a bit fancy maybe some patterns or something like that with our tunnel um, but yeah so what I've got to do next is just fill in a lot of this with dirt alright let's take a look on this side here you can see it's all been filled in if we go around to the other side I think the shape I think the shape is getting there it still needs a little bit of tweaking uh, like over on this side something doesn't quite feel right with this and it also has created a big uh, flat area up the top here now this will probably look better when I put down some bone meal and cover it in grass that's going to be quite important to making this look natural but I brought the, the shape around over to this side a little bit and extended it out here which we didn't really need to do but it was just feeling too flat everywhere so that's made a big difference there as well filled in all of this bit over here you can see Mr. Spot and also that the grass is growing back and uh, Jonah Gee came over for a, oh, and by the way I know I pronounced that wrong, it's actually Jonage, but I decided I'm going to call him Jonah Gee just to be awkward. <laughs> so yeah, he came over and had a visit and he made a trade with me for a pick. It was a Efficiency 4 and Fortune 3 one, which I thought was a good building pick uh, to use. And I probably would have spent the diamonds that I asked for them on picks anyway, so that was a good trade. He took uh, three Feather Falling Boots and I got a pick in return. Okay, the basic tunnel is made. I'm not too happy with the way the exit is done here. I uh, just made this up temporarily. I think we need to do something proper. We need to make the land at the top come over a bit further and then have a nice proper entrance. Um, but I like the way it ties up to the sand at the edge here. It would have been nice if the gravel was a little bit lower so it would have been at the same height as the sand. But I put in these cobblestone steps so that goes nicely like that. And the tunnel itself is really like too narrow and oh that looks awful when you're travelling through it. So we need to find a way to make this interesting. Now at the moment I don't have too many ideas. I know that I want to keep the ceiling. I think the ceiling's nice. And I'm not sure what we should do to break up the walls. I'm thinking something with like stairs at the bottom and top and then some sort of pattern behind these blocks so there's a bit of shape to the walls and then we'll put lights in them as well because at the moment we're just using these torches. Um, but I've got a bad feeling that whatever we do with the walls it's still going to feel quite narrow and uh, almost claustrophobic but it's not really too big a deal because it's just a tunnel really that leads us to over there so um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy I guess ok let's take a look I've gone for some redstone lamps on either side I've put some stairs and some of the creeper face blocks as well and you know what this looks really good kind of brings in space to the room which is what I was after uh, we can get rid of these torches now as well and the only thing I don't like about it is the stairs um, the shape and everything is brilliant it's just the stairs, they don't have the same texture and it kind of makes it stand out a little but other than that I'm really happy with that, that's cool a little addition, if I could make one change it would be to put some more colour in here and I've just had an idea perhaps to use uh, the middle bit here because there's three of these blocks between each one of these which is five blocks wide and uh, maybe we could put a strip of lapis or something like that down the middle I'll, uh, I'll grab a few materials and we'll try a few different ones and see what looks good. So first of all I brought along the expensive materials. Let's just move away from that nether portal. That noise really does irritate me. Now I was thinking we could put one block in like that just to break up the pattern or we could do a strip from top to bottom. I don't think side to side would look that good. We also want to fill that in because otherwise a mob will be able to spawn in there. So something like that. That kind of breaks it up too much with the blue but the blue looks better next to it. Uh, one of the other materials I thought of using was nether brick. That might look good. A lot of people like that next to sandstone. I don't normally like it, but I think when the sandstone is more dominant, like it is here, it should look okay. Um, so I thought we could try gold as well, being a similar colour. Eh, doesn't really. And then we've got the emeralds as well. I had a bit of a scare because I couldn't find where I'd put these. And uh, you know what? I don't think any of them look that great. The blue does look good, I've got to say that. And that's actually just giving me an idea. We could put water. Um, that might not be... No, it should be possible because we have grass above the sandstone. So next to the side of that we could have water going down to below. We could even do lava in here. That would be crazy. Um, but let's just put some iron on the sides like this. Hmm. I'm not sure. I really don't like those. I think water would look good because it's kind of natural, it's animated and we can put sandstone behind it and maybe glowstone at the bottom um, but before we do any more 
<laughs> sorry, before we do that, we should try a couple more uh, materials. There we go. That looks great. <laughs> I love how the water looks next to it. There's a few reasons why I think water looks so good like this. First of all, in this case, the water, the colour of it next to the sandstone, they go well together. But I think the water gives you a sense of depth, and that's what's so nice about it. As you walk past, you know, you see more of what's behind it. And also there's some animation on it as well, so I don't know, that's definitely my favourite. But I can't really make up my mind of what to do here. If I was to pick one, it probably would be the water, but I thought, why don't we have a vote and see what you guys like the most. I don't want to do gold and emerald, I don't really like how they look. Um, that's something that's hard to do really, to use these ore blocks, uh, what they call them, not ores, is it minerals? I think that's what it says on the wiki. But yeah, you know the ones I'm talking about. These ones, they're just so colourful, it's hard to use them with other textures in my opinion, because the other ones are so more natural and, yeah, not as bright. But anyway, uh, back to what I was saying, you guys should have a vote, so we can pick lapis or ice, or water or soul sand. So leave a comment, let me know what one's your favourite, and I'll tally them up, and next episode we will uh, pick the one that you guys voted for and put it in. So I've tried to make the entrance a little bit more natural, and I don't know, it, it's definitely natural, but it doesn't look 100% how I'd like it to. Uh, but I think it's best to give myself a break at the moment, I've not got too many ideas, and we're at that time in the episode where I have to say goodbye. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.